Lesson 7 for May 9 through to 15, Language, Text and Context, read by Dr. Percy Harold. Friday, May 15. From the book The Great Controversy, page 9, we read, In his word, God has committed to men the knowledge necessary for salvation. The Holy Scriptures are to be accepted as an authoritative, infallible revelation of his will. They are the standard of character, the revealer of doctrines, and the test of experience. Yet the fact that God has revealed his will to men through his word has not rendered needless the continued presence and guiding of the Holy Spirit. On the contrary, the Spirit was promised by our Saviour to open the word to his servants, to illuminate and apply its teachings. And, since it was the Spirit of God that inspired the Bible, it is impossible that the teaching of the Spirit should ever be contrary to that of the Word. End of quote. And that brings us to our four discussion questions for this week. 1. Regardless of how many translations of the Bible exist in your language, what can you do to make the most of what you have? How can you learn to cherish the Bible as the Word of God and to seek by faith to obey what it teaches? 2. Think about the difference between what the Word of God teaches about human origins, that we were created by God on the sixth day of creation, and what humanity itself under the name of science teaches, which is that we evolved over billions of years. What should this vast contrast between the two tell us about how important it is to stick to what the Bible teaches, and how far humanity can get when it veers away from the Word of God and what it plainly teaches? 3. What Bible tools, if any, are available to you that can help you better understand the Bible? And, even if you don't have any extra tools, how can you learn to apply some of the lessons learned this week about how to interpret the Bible? 4. The children of Israel were told to teach their own children the great truths committed to them and to retell the stories about God's leading in their lives. Deuteronomy 4 verse 9 Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, and teach them to your children and your grandchildren. Putting aside the obvious benefit of passing the faith on, what is it about the teaching and the telling of stories about God's leading in our lives that tends to increase our faith? That is, why is sharing biblical truth with others beneficial to ourselves as well? Inside Story Our mission story this week is titled, I Have Chills and it's by Camel Metz. Liz was busy working in her home in Houston, Texas, United States, when suddenly something told her to be still for a moment. Just then, she heard a knock at the door. When she opened the door, however, she didn't see anyone. David Pano already had left her porch and was swiftly walking to the next house. Seeing his retreating figure, Liz called out to let him know she was there. Pano heard her call and returned to her home. He smiled and handed her a glow tract. Is this from a cult? she asked. Pano assured her that it was not and that it was just a Christian tract. I have chills right now, Liz exclaimed. Not too long ago I had a dream. In the dream I saw two ministers of the gospel coming to my house sharing literature and I knew that they were not a cult. Pano, a minister who works as Assistant Ministries Director at the Seventh-day Adventist Church's Michigan Conference, was thrilled to hear about her dream. The only problem with its fulfilment, he quietly pondered, was that he was there by himself. Just then, Taylor Hinkle, pictured here below, his ministry partner on that street, arrived. Hinkle, a chaplain and Bible teacher at Great Lakes Adventist Academy in Michigan, had run out of glow tracts on his side of the street, so he had come to Pano to get some more tracts. There were now two ministers of the gospel at her door. Liz looked at Pano and Hinkle. 
I believe that this is from God, she said. In my dream I saw two ministers at my door bringing hope to me, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, This is your last chance. I'm coming back soon. Please pray for me, she said. I need Jesus in my life. The two young ministers, who were going door to door with other young adults during the GYC's annual convention in Houston on December 30, 2016, gladly prayed for her. Liz signed up to take Bible studies with a local church. God sends his people as ministers of hope into this dark and gloomy world to introduce souls to the source of hope. Adventist Church co-founder Ellen G. White wrote, We are to minister to the despairing and inspire hope in the hopeless. That's from Desire of Ages, page 350. Why not choose today to be a minister of hope for Jesus? And there's a picture here of Taylor Hinkle and Camel Metz as the international director for the GLOW ministry. Hi there. Thanks for watching this video on the Advent Band Ministries YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to be alerted whenever we upload new videos. So, until we meet him in the clouds, may God continue to bless you. This lesson was read by Dr. Percy Harold for Christian Services for the Blind and Hearing Impaired, Christian Record Services for the Blind, the Sabbath School Department and Hope Channel. You can also listen on the official Sabbath School 4 app and the Apple iTunes app Sabbath School with Percy Harold. Remember, God is always faithful.